Hey guys, today we're going to take another look at another free resource on Azure. We're going to be looking at Azure DevOps and how you can use this to build and deploy applications in the context of Azure or really any environment for that matter. But this is just a, a cool offering. If you use it for like personal projects or for small teams, you can use it for free. You basically get unlimited number of repos and uh, you can use a lot of the features that are built into the Azure DevOps platform without having to pay anything for it. But if you go beyond those limits, of course, you'll need to pay for licenses for Azure DevOps. But the free offering at least lets you play with the offering and lets you learn it. And you can also use it to manage some small projects that you might use for open source or for uh, just small internal projects, whatever it might be. It's just a good, useful tool for doing all kinds of things in the DevOps context. So let's just go over there and just show you some of the features that you can do. Then we'll look at the app that I've been using kind of as a demo for free stuff on Azure, which is a mean stack app. And I'm going to deploy the app from Azure DevOps into Azure using some of the free resources on Azure as well. So this is the landing page for the Azure DevOps portal. If you log in and you're not you know, going directly to a given project, you'll see a, a set of tiles that basically represents the projects that are going to be part of your DevOps experience. Now you have the organizations over here on the left. I have two. Um, I have this one right here, which I only have a single project and I went through and cleaned all this up because I had a bunch of old junk in here, but I went through uh, recently and cleaned that up and just added a single project right here. And you could easily add a new project right here. So once you have the, the project added, you have a lot of different features that are available for use in a project. So the main features that we have are boards, repos, pipelines, test plans, and artifacts. And then the overview is just kind of a synoptic view of these other various features. It will give you KPIs basically around different kinds of things like pipeline uh, build successes and failures and that kind of thing, members. Um, and you can pretty much customize this view to include whatever KPIs that you're looking for, because all the data is uh, available to be mined out of these other features down here. You can customize this view. Now, the other three features that are on this that I'm not using for this uh, particular um, build right here is the boards, the test plans and artifacts. Now boards are how you manage the work. So this is where you create work items. So this is where you would take work items and organize that into things like stories. You could break stories down into tasks and then you can make stories parts of, of epics. And then you can make all that part of a larger feature or a larger project and, and build out the scrum model. If you want to use something like Kanban, you can use Kanban as part of this and just use everything as a work item and just basically go through and select it and move it through the Kanban board if you want to use it for that. But basically it gives you all the features you need to run an agile style uh, build shop. And this could work for software that's already in, uh, in progress or software that's been written and you're just maintaining it through bug fixes and things like that. So basically you just have the backlog, you fill that out with all your work that, you, that needs to be done. And then with that, you plan your sprints and then you take the, the items out of the back, I'll put them in the sprints and you manage the work here. And then you have the work items here that you can use to basically move them through um, the progress here. This is just a view that allows you to filter uh, the work items and work with those, uh, your work items or other work items that are a part of this particular project. Now, in the uh, other features that are available are test plans. Now, test plans are basically the ability to create a either manual tests or you can do some automation, but it allows you to create a plan that you can work through to test new releases of software. So this basically gives you uh, the ability to put in a new requirement and then the pass fail criterion. And then if it's a manual test, you can then go through this and manual and pass or fail it, or you can do some of the automation that's built into this as well. And with various configurations and so on, you can use the test to um, basically produce a, an output that says, hey, this test passed or failed based on all the different kinds of things that are available inside of test plans. Now, the artifacts are useful for building things like repositories, like NPM packages or NuGet packages. All of those different kinds of artifacts that are outputs from builds can go into an artifacts folder. And this is something that you can reference externally or something that you can uh, reference internally as well as part of builds from other pipelines. So it's a, basically an output repo, if you will, for just files that can be incorporated into software or made available through as SDKs or libraries, what have you. So those are the features that I'm not using. So the two that I want to focus on that are 
probably the most common ones in Azure DevOps are repos and pipelines. And repos are exactly what they sound like. These are code repositories. And with the code repositories, this is where you can put all your, all your code files for uh, your application. So in my case, what I'm doing here is I have a repo that has my application in it. And it's the same code that I had in my local box that we've looked at in previous videos. And I have a client and a server, and this is just a static web app front end and a server back end that's written in Node.js. And the front end is written in uh, TypeScript. So the uh, Angular with TypeScript. So I can build these separately. So each one of these various uh, components right here is a different aspect of the application. So Angular apps are built separately and deployed separately, and so are the server components as well. Um, so I basically call two sets of commands, one to build uh, the, the client and one to build the server. Now, given that these are fairly small, I basically just built a single pipeline to do this. But the way that that works is basically something that triggers the build, what could be a push to the the, the repository, or um, you could do a, uh, anytime there's a push to it, or if I do a pull by way of a pull request, uh, I can select the repo I want to build from, and then the process will use one of the either hosted agents, which is uh, basically a Linux box or a Windows box, that will allow you to automate the build of the software using Azure DevOps. Now, you can build and push from a local environment to a production environment, but in the DevOps world, working with automated builds to deploy from a code repository to a production environment or even uh, a test environment is more ideal because it allows you to control the environments a little more to have less uh, error from things like human uh, configuration errors or protects the production environment from people actually deploying to it and potentially breaking it without first going through several gates to get it to that environment. So the ability to do that is all built into Azure DevOps and the security features allow you to do things that require a code review, require a gated check-in and do all those kinds of things. I'm not doing that. I'm just showing you my, my repository here, which is basically my code and I have a single uh, branch here, which is my master branch. But if I went down here and looked at all the history on here, you can see the um, the, the the forks and builds right here. It's uh, this is basically um, where I was working on things offline. So this is where I did the initial push. I worked on some things, and it basically created some uh, the Azure Pipelines YAML file, and I updated that several times while I was working on the, the build. I, I basically brought in some stuff back in, so I pulled this down to my local repo, and then you know, basically uploaded a pub profile, just playing with different things on this. And then you can see my two uh, streams there, finally pulled them off back into, I pulled my, pushed my local code back up into this repository. And now I have a unified you know, single branch that I can use for building. So you can see the the commits and it'll show you more, uh, more branching taxonomy as you look at that. And this is all the pushes that I have here and then the builds that it triggered. You can see the branches that are available right here. I don't currently have another one other than master, but if I wanted to branch this and do a pull request, I could do that. And then tags and, and pull requests. I don't have pull requests or tags on this, but you could use these features as well. So the repos are pretty straightforward. It's just Git, and there's really not a whole lot to talk about other than it's just a Git repo that gives you the features that you would expect from a Git repo. So pipelines are probably the most popular feature of, of Azure DevOps other than repos probably. And this is because this is where you build all your automation. So the, uh, oh, the other ones are used for their obvious use cases, but pipelines are where you take all that code that you have and then you do all the builds for both compiling the code and then deploying the code to its respective environment. So it has a lot of different features that you can work with. Now, the ones that I uh, most often use is obviously the pipelines features, but sometimes you use environments if you want to uh, manage resources and deployments in a given specific environment, and you have the ability to look at releases if you wanted to have a release build that you wanted to build that wasn't deployed. Or you can have things like libraries, which are sets of variables and settings and files that you can use as part of your pipelines. Now, if your environments are not complicated, then most everything will probably work with, with just a simple pipeline. And the uh, pipeline is just something that you can set up and it will work for your particular application. And then you can configure it uh, at build time, depending on the context that you want to work on. Now, the context I'm working on here is basically a single 
deployment to uh, Azure, which is going to be uh, Azure free resources, which is kind of the point of this is a free resource on Azure. Now, when you're working on these, if you've never worked with Azure uh, and the pipelines, it's pretty straightforward. You basically have a YAML file that looks something like this. And the YAML file is, is just the instructions that an agent is going to use to build your code or deploy your code, depending on whatever you're doing. Now, depending on what you're doing, um, this is what the YAML file looks like. And so my particular YAML file here is using Node.js to basically do everything because Angular uses Node.js packages to install the, the, the command line utilities for building uh, Angular apps. And then uh, Node.js backend uses Node.js to basically create the bundle for node modules and um, basically create an output for your application to run. So that's where these various um, scripts are gonna come in. So this is pretty straightforward. Uh, you basically give it a trigger, which I currently have mine on master, even though it's commented out. If I did that right there, it'd allow it to trigger on master. So that's basically any push to master is going to get uh, triggered this. In other words, that could be a pull to master for that matter. And this is where you want to determine which pool you want to run on. So the pool is uh, the kind of node that you want to build this on. So it could be Windows, it could be Ubuntu, um, or it could be a self-hosted um, agent, which in that context, you you can put a virtual machine up in your, or a physical machine for that matter, in your network, and then it will work with Azure DevOps to run all of these uh, commands. And it communicates with DevOps when builds become available. Or you can run these as VMs on Azure too, if you have a particular context that you need uh, access to like network resources or things that aren't publicly available, that's what those hosted runners are for. Now the um, self-hosted runner that is. Now the self-hosted agents um, are opposed to the, the public agents that are just a part of the pool that are available from Azure. So these are just virtual machines that everybody uses. You allocate the machine for um, as long as it takes to build your, your software. It runs and then it deletes the, the virtual machine or the context whenever your software has been built. And there's no record of that on the machine. It just removes it. So all of this stuff right here is done in that context. So these are just the steps. And th this particular one is just using a, a task to install node tools. And it's running a couple of scripts based on that. So the scripts are just shell commands that run inside of the agent and because this is using shell commands based on things like angular builds and things like that it's just using the shell extension um and so this is installs node.js on the agent and then this right here builds the uh the front end so it's basically using um npm to build the front end of the application and this one deploys it right here uh this is the one that uses the swa which is the uh, static web app, the command line utility. Now there is a, there isn't a, a task over here that for that, but I've had less than stellar experience. This works great um, for deploying to static web applications. It's very easy You just basically create a secret with your deployment token and you can get that from the Azure portal. And then it is basically call the endpoint. Um, you just call this command deploy point it to your code, tell it what environment you want to use, and then just tell it what deployment token to you use, which is a secret inside of DevOps, which is very easy to do here. This one builds the server component, and this one actually uses another task for deploying um, something uh, to Azure, and it's just deploying to an app service. So this one just tells it um, what to use for it. And this one is using a pre-authenticated uh, user or principal uh, to to deploy this. There's a couple ways you can make this work, but this is the way I'm doing it in this particular context. And it just deploys it to this subscription, to this app service, to this app name right here. And this is the path to the, to the folder. And that's the environment and that's the startup command. And once this runs, everything just works. So if I save this, um, uh, we'll, it'll actually kick off a build and that build is gonna look something like this. And the build will, um, basically wait till a, a, an agent becomes available. And once the agent becomes available, you will be able to see it run down through those particular tasks. So we'll come back when this is done. Okay, it looks like everything finished. Now let's go over to the portal. 
And uh, let's take a look at this app now. It should be up and running now. Um, let's come over here to my resource group. I have um, this one right here. I have an app service and a static web app. These are both on the free tier. And then of course, Cosmos DB as well. So this is a mean stack running for free. And uh, let's pop open this um, URL right here. It's just the API. So if I do slash employees on this, I should just get a list of employees uh, like like that. So it's just a single one right here. And this is the front end app for this. And you can see that it's um, just the back end hitting that same back end. So if I change this position, uh, create a new one, call it Blaze2, and let's say new guy, and he's very junior, and I click add to that, it'll add a new one to the database. So this is basically deploy the code using Azure DevOps pipelines and Azure DevOps repos.